Hey guys, I'm going to be doing the Lululemon 10K on November 12th in Scottsdale. I'm actually going to be pacing the 40 minute group and I'm going to try and give really nice even splits and hopefully we can get through in 40 flat. And I hope you guys will join me there. I will put the link to registration in the description. All right, we are on to the final lactate test of the week. This one will be in the run. This one I'm actually quite fascinated to do because I do truly feel like over the last three years living in Tucson that I have my run has deteriorated, I believe due to training so much outside in the heat. And I believe I've gotten into pretty good form by about March. And then as the temperature goes up, I start to sacrifice speed and intensity because of the heat. And yes, you still have a cardiovascular stimulus but you do not have the muscle fatigue resistance or the capacity to produce speed and because it's just too hot. And so basically you start to deteriorate over the next five or six months. And then the whole process starts again in like October, mid-October when it starts to cool down. But the problem with that is that uh, those are like the key months when you really start to get fit and you really start to do some fast running And so, you know, you need a whole year to get super fit You can't just use six months as something of you know years on years on years of continuous training that allows you to get uh, To your maximum capacity. So I'm definitely going to be doing a lot more indoors on the treadmill So this data actually is going to be quite important to me to gauge how well that's doing as well I tend to get quite lazy in the run, I would say. Not so lazy from the standpoint of like, I'm not working hard, but I just think because, uh, for instance, going outside, it's easier to do it outside, um, like easier. Uh, but I make the wrong decision in that I know that I'm not running fast enough, especially not anymore when you got guys like Jason West and Christian Blumenfeld and Gustav Eden who are running five minute mile pace literally off the bike. Uh, you know, running five minute mile pace is actually quite hard in the summer here, like for one single mile rep. So we're going to be doing a lot more work from here on out uh, here on the woodway indoors in a controlled environment. So this data is going to be very important to me. So I'm not going to give you any preamble on the actual lactate tests because I've done it on the last two videos. All I'm going to say is what the protocol we will be following. And so once again, uh, you can do whatever you want as long as it's, you know, semi-specific to the, the way you train and is repeatable. So we're going to be doing this test inside. Uh, the temperature is going to be around 70. Maybe it'll get to 68, but that's what we're aiming for. Somewhere around 70. We should be able to replicate that over and over and over again every eight weeks. And I'm doing it on the Woodway treadmill. The Woodway is an extremely difficult treadmill. This, this one, anyhow, is... Uh, Whatever I can do on this woodway when I go outside, I actually find it to be easier. And that's also a reason why I choose to go outside because I'm like running at 320Ks on this thing and I'm like, this is freaking hard. And then I can go out on the track and do it a lot easier. So I tend to choose the easy thing. And that's what I mean by being lazy. Um, this I use a RUNN, R-U-N-N, treadmill bent belt sensor to measure the speed. That then goes to Zwift. And then how I use the, um, how, do, how I gauge the intervals is how far I go when I lap it uh, on Zwift. And that's coming from the run treadmill belt speed sensor. It measures, it seems to measure about 0.3 of a mile quicker than the treadmill says, which would make sense. I would put it at more like half a mile an hour quicker. The belt is, you're actually running something like that. That's what it feels like. But anyways, it doesn't matter. None of that really matters because uh, it, you just want reproducibility. And most definitely the, tri the woodway is always the same. It's always quite hard. And so our protocol is going to be six rounds of 1600. So basically a mile and we'll start off really easy and progress all the way number six to extremely hard. Try and do number approximately around four knocking on threshold, five above threshold, and six way above threshold. And we'll take between 90 seconds and two minutes recovery just because the, you have to slow down, stop, get the lactate, get it back up to speed. And it takes a little bit more time than for instance in the pool or on the bike. So that is the protocol. Now we will execute it. switch shoes. Baseline is 
We'll standardize the warm up, eight minutes easy, two minutes progressive, three big accelerations, baseline 1.2 millimole. Now we'll get into the carbons. We're doing the whole thing in the carbons because pretty well I'll do all my quality now in carbons, saves the legs. How do I feel about it? I don't know. Long term, you're losing something doing everything in the carbons for sure. So, you know, am I going to definitely do some stuff uh, in the normals? Yes. Super high end though. I mean, yeah, you need to get you need to get moving quick. So, super high end stuff definitely using the cheater shoes. Lactate after the first one. Baseline 0 0.9 millimole, just like the bike. Zero point nine millimole. So, still exercise baseline. Zero point nine millimole. Under aerobic threshold, still. Ish, right there. Now we will cross it. My lactate's not going to go very high because it's actually my muscles. Just as I said, <coughs> my muscles are the limiter here which is what happens, and I just can't produce speed because I don't ever produce speed because it's too effing hot. So, 1.5, it's literally behaving identical to the bike, identical. 1.8, so, I mean, I, I, don't, I don't think I'm gonna be able to get it over three, to be honest with you, I, I don't, it's my legs. My legs are going to fail. <laughs> Maybe three millimole. It just it's, it doesn't mean anything other than three point three. So, I mean, it's great data, excellent data. That to me means it it just solidifies what I already know, which is yeah, we're going somewhere else in the summer. I just deter like I, it's three years now of no improvement in running like no speed increase it's actually three years of speed decrease because it's too challenging to hit that pace trevor foley for instance in the summer uh, in the morning i believe did he's a very good runner 14 flat five care and he went out and did i think it was five times a mile on the track and buried himself for 450 miles and really high lactate and he's a very good runner and it was cool. It's just too hard. Like it's too, you can't run fast enough. Your heart rate just goes through the road. My heart rate to do that, I wouldn't be able to do that. If we went outside right now to do this, it's 90-ish out. And we're also at 3,000 feet, so it makes it even harder. And my heart rate would be above max. It's just my muscles. It's my muscles. So that's the video. Um, We'll hopefully present a graph too with the data and then where the inflection point is. So we'll have a sense of where we should kind of be training when we're doing threshold type sessions. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed the lactate week series. And uh, if you enjoyed, please like the video, subscribe if you're not subscribed and comment of what you would like to see more of. And if you enjoyed the video, if you didn't enjoy the video, then don't give us negative comments. Sorry. Constructive feedback is okay though. Bye. Conclude our lactate test series round one with the run graph. Once again, big thanks to Mark Gravelin for doing this beautiful graphical representation of the data. We have the lactate in millimoles per liter here on the left, speed in meters per second here on the bottom, the heart rate on the right. And then each data point is plotted. And because most of us probably don't think in meters per second, uh, we put, plotted the actual speed and pace per kilometer just to give a better sense of what the actual efforts were.
This graph looks the least pretty, I think, of the three, mainly because I did a pretty big jump here. I probably should have went to seven um, reps just because I was getting a bit frustrated, as you probably saw in the video, because I was just stagnant at whatever you want to call this, the aerobic threshold. Like I, my, lac my blood lactate really wasn't building, and so I was like, I need to get it to build a little bit here. And so I made a pretty large jump of intensity. And so this probably would have been nicer if I rounded it up a bit, maybe something more in the middle at 325 per kilometer here. So probably would have more been the lactate around here, right? And then it would have, I don't know, if we had, that also was quite a large jump from 318 to 302. We could probably smooth this graph out a bit by doing more reps. The nice part about this is now we have a better sense of what the curve looks like and what the corresponding speeds are going to be. So we don't need to waste. I would almost go as far as to say this first rep was, was kind of a waste. So next time we can kind of get down to business and maybe start more here in this range at the four minutes per kilometer range, which is going to allow us to have, you know, at least one more middling rep here to smooth this graph out. And we'll also have a sense of kind of, uh, you know, what the intensity levels we're looking at to elicit, you know, ch jumps in blood lactate. But anyways, this is the graph that we have from the data that we have. And the inflection point was 317 per kilometer, which coincides in my mind probably with what I would call threshold. This is probably right around what I would do reps at, like by feel, if, I, if you had me do five times 2K or something, that is kind of probably right around where I would be if I was giving you true threshold. You know, the reality is I, I did close the final 5K in Michigan 70.3 at, I believe it was three, 316 per kilometer. So, you know, and it was hard, of course, but, you know, that would make sense that towards the end, I might be able to, if I'm still feeling pretty good, go up to threshold and hang on to that for five or 10K. So, this graph up till this point, of course, uh, totally agrees with my experience. The blood lactate though was becoming insanely hard to get up. And this is where I think training, you know, actually not doing enough high intensity. Like I've done very little high intensity literally in 2023 because of living in Tucson. The last time I did real high intensity, no word of a lie, I would say was in before Miami 70.3 or Miami, I'm sorry, challenge Miami or clash Miami. Um, and then after that race, I crashed, then I got sick, then it started to get hot and I, I literally stopped doing intensity. And so I, I, I think, you know, the glycolytic system anyway is not really activating much when I run due to the training. You know, when you train, you get good at what you train to get good at. And so, you know, I'm pretty good in this sub two millimole range and have become pretty efficient there. Uh, but I, when you ask me to produce speed and to produce lactate, I don't seem to have that capacity. And unfortunately, 317 per kilometer in the modern era of long or middle distance triathlon is not going to cut it. So we will definitely be looking to uh, shift this whole graph to the right. And we will check back in in about eight weeks to see if we are successfully doing that. Thanks for watching the series.